If water magic is chaos, then what is air, fire and earth magic? And more similar questions came in from colleagues about the water element. Someone says water has been acting up in the last weeks or so. Constant problems with household water appliances, they're leaking, not working or clogged. Does this mean that there is too much water in my system, or on the contrary, water is trying to reach me but can't? And a few more questions of similar character came in from practically all our colleagues, both from across the ocean as well as the local ones. As you can see, it is a common problem. What does such a problem speak of? What the colleague has described is, of course, an obstruction of the water element. It means that water can't get through. And what does it mean when water can't get through? Water is a symbol of chaos. Water is a symbol of new information which doesn't yet exist in this world. When is the water unable to get through? When is the new information unable to get through? If there is no place for it. If in a system, in one's own inner system, everything is very tightly packed. If all units and informational connections are assigned and all of them have a label. If your consciousness overall is in a state of overarching order. In such a case, new information can't get past an already formed system. Yet the pressure is quite high and it begins to gradually destroy these established connections. It tears off the labels, breaks down dividers, cuts the wires along which the energy flows. That is when it seems like the consciousness is entered by chaos. The outside world is a mirror. It is a mirror of what happens inside ourselves and inside of the people that surround us, whom we are connected to by certain cognitive bonds. If the problem is taking place in your community, they will inevitably find a reflection in the surrounding reality. What is happening with household appliances and water is merely a reflection of what is happening in your consciousness. A mirror. It's not the appliances that are the reasons for the state of affairs. It is you. You are the reason for what happens out there in the outer world. If every time you encounter this problem, you ask yourself the question, what is it that I am being stubborn about now? What am I still trying to assign labels to? Labels that show and define for me what is what, who is who. If today, yet again, I assigned five labels more than there needed to be, then it's most likely I'll have these sorts of problems. A fossé breaks, some water appliances expire, the water gets shut off. Or on the contrary, there will be a flood beyond measure and you will flood your neighbor's apartment all the way down to the ground floor. It is an indicator that you have not been able to handle some kind of new information. Go back a few days, or maybe even weeks in your experience, and try to realize where you habitually assign labels, where you again habitually assigned meaning to phenomena that represent something completely different in the new world and indicate something different. Yet you still define people in one category, the system into a different category, events in a third category, just as you're used to doing. But the system of chaos says, why? No, this is something completely different. Completely different. It is best to conduct such inventory as soon as you feel inner dissatisfaction. You know, like inner uneasiness, like something is gathering up in your solar plexus and begins to press down. This would be the first signal that must not be missed. Then one starts to have issues with watery and other humoral fluids in their own body. For example, you begin to swell, or on the contrary, the organism is losing lots of water, becomes dehydrated out of the blue, in the middle of perfect health. These are already bodily indicators. When it pours out into the outside world, it is the last stage of the process. It means that you simply missed the first two signals, didn't pay attention to them, suppressed them. 
You attributed them to outside circumstances or weather changes or maybe to magnetic storms, basically to something external. And in doing so, perhaps you made a mistake. This is, of course, why all of this spilled out into destruction of the outside environment, since you determined that it is the outside environment that is the cause of your inner problem. Or rather, your subconsciousness made this decision. Now, what concerns the magic of the elements? Let us take a look at our classic system, the three-circle scheme and twelve proto-foundations. As we look at it, we will instantly recall how it works. Look, on the outer circle, we see the depiction of the elements, four base elements that are foundational in our Western European tradition. In the Eastern tradition, everything is set up slightly differently, but this is what this one looks like. The elements get transformed through informational systems that are called proto-foundations. The closer to an element, the greater the degree to which a proto-foundation reflects the essence of the element. The further from an element, the lesser the degree to which a proto-foundation reflects its essence. In this way, for example, the element of water is related to the greatest degree with the proto-foundation chaos, then with the proto-foundation freedom, and lastly with the proto-foundation death. However, all three of these proto-foundations, in one way or another, reflect the functions of water, dissolution, engulfment, coming of all in a unified form. Same applies to the element of fire, for example. It reflects itself first and foremost through the proto-foundation light, then the proto-foundation good, and lastly through the proto-foundation love. The main reason and meaning of the existence of light is dissemination and transmission of information. This means that fire is able to transmit information best and comes most into its essence covering as much ground as possible through the proto-foundation light. To a lesser degree, it can do that through the proto-foundation good, now specifying what information is appropriate in this world for survival, for victory, what have you, for something useful basically so that the process does not cease. And the proto-foundation love serves as a tertiary indicator here, a tertiary characteristic of fire, which is to disseminate itself by the power of attraction, by the power of willful dissemination. Same applies to the proto-foundation dark. It is the derivative and the first daughter of the earth element. The proto-foundation dark. All accumulates in earth, all is preserved in earth. The proto-foundation dark, first of all, fulfills this function. Then the proto-foundation evil also accumulates, but something special. Something special that is said to not be allowed to spread. It must be conserved, meaning it is inappropriate in this world, in this current epoch. In the current time, this is inappropriate. It is but evil, not useful or effective. And and the proto-foundation hate, as a tertiary force that is derivative of Earth, tells us what to do so that what is not needed may never be, what must be repelled from and never let into one's life. Same applies to the element of air that refracts itself through the proto-foundation order, organizing information, setting the vectors of development according to a certain vector, certain rhythm. Then the proto-foundation tradition. It specifies order, acting upon order directly, and sets the direction and velocity for the blowing winds and air, and as a consequence, gives birth to life, creates a rhythm, coordinates these rules, coordinates it with natural rhythms of life, and basically serves as a reason as to why we see life the way it is and not in any other way. The magic of the elements is the work with the root cause. The magic of the proto-foundations, in turn, is the work with the effects of the root cause. Naturally, the magic of the elements is always the most difficult because the human consciousness has a hard time ridding itself of preferences. Every proto-foundation implies preferences, but in order to work with the elements in their pure form, there must be no preferences. An air magician will not have a preference for any particular type of order and tradition, and all life is equal to him.
A fire magician will never be picky about what sources and informational channels are more or less humane. A water magician will never take into consideration what is preferable death versus a non-preferable one, or that for some people freedom is accessible and for others it is not. For him all is freedom and all is chaos. No, there is not an option to have a preference there. Same applies to the earth magicians, who are aware of the function of earth to preserve. They know the rules of preservation and will never give preference to any type of information, god or power. They won't decide who is to exist and who is to stay preserved, because earth knows herself when it is time for someone to be born and manifested. Within this lies the difference between the magicians of the elements and the magicians of proto-foundations. Magicians of proto-foundation may have preferences in their practice, whereas the magicians of the elements cannot afford this. From this follows another colleague's question. What types of specializations exist between mages? All of these specializations that I just outlined for you, all of them directly depend on what force the magician works with. If this is a mage who works with a proto-foundation life, then it is of course a healer. If this is a mage who works with a proto-foundation evil, also known as those who perform maleficium, meaning those who work directly with the algorithm of evil, not with the intention of causing harm, but in order to detect it and separate it out, to separate it from any other type of information and understand why X or Y algorithm of achieving a result is not preferable in this specific time, in this specific epoch, in this specific community and for this specific person. Actually, the proto-foundation evil is a domain of science basic science, including the scientists and their consciousness. They are the priests of this proto-foundation. Whereas those who work to spread the proto-foundation good, had the representatives of this profession not disgraced themselves, we would have said that they are the writers and journalists. They are the people who disseminate information. Their task is to spread information without placing limitations on it and to do it accurately. Unfortunately, neither writers nor journalists have stood up to the task, especially in the last few years. Both the pandemic and today's situation prove it. It was their exam to see if they have a claim to the magic of information. All of them, or almost all, prove that they do not have a right to this magic since they used it incorrectly. However, I will point out that specialization does depend exactly on the kind of power, kind of entity the magical consciousness itself works with. Work with the elements is of course considered the ultimate of arts, it is the hardest indeed. Once upon a time it was mastered to perfection by those who resided on Celtic and Slavic lands, as well as those on the territories of Eurasia, on our continent basically, and in our hemisphere. They were called Meiji, wise men, druidic Meiji, and wolves. We, to the best of our ability, are trying to revive this tradition. We, as much as we are able to, are trying to make our consciousness worthy of this magic. And I do hope that slowly but surely we will succeed. <laughs>